All right, garbage deck activate time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys got me. It's garbage deck activate time. This one comes in from the super duper top. Oh, it's a Zed. Wait, Pog. Wait, this deck's lit. This deck's crazy. I'm playing this in ranked. <clears throat> Get an emote. Jesus Christ. All right, guys. The Garen emote is the single cringiest thing I have ever seen in my life. Okay. <laughs> Guys, come on. That's why it's good. Sorry, I just don't have that level of irony. All right. Well, we've got Zed Tarek and we're attacking on evens. And Tarek decks kind of like attacking on evens. Or at least the bad Tarek decks do, which are the ones that we call Tarek decks. I guess the only problem is, like, I mean, my Zed is just gonna get, like, Mystic Shotted, which feels kind of bad, but, eh, whatever. That deck never draws removal. God, this Ballistic Bot attack is so rude. Uh. That's probably correct. I like that play. Pre-committed the axe, yikes. So he has to pre-commit that because I'm never going to block and he just wants to deal two more damage. And he axes the ballistic bot to play around like block plus X because Draven never levels. I'm, I'm pretty sure I agree with that exact line. That was probably correct, guys. Zenith is probably correct here. I'm probably supposed to Zenith, but I just can't help myself. It's a Taric deck. Like, if he has Mystic Shot, we're just not winning. Ah, uh, what are you gonna do? Alright. If he has Mystic Shot, we're just not winning. Hmm. I mean, I can Zenith my Zed. He can't flock and Mystic. But it will literally be one or the other. Like, guaranteed. Man, this kind of blows. I mean, I guess I just try to, like, pale. They follow the wrong master. It's just kind of sad. Like, we're just not putting, like, any actual clock on this guy. Alright. You might notice we have literally, like, basically no blockers for his next attack. I'm sure that won't be an issue. And this is why his, like, pre-commitment of Axe on Ballistic Bot was a good play. Um... Draven decks, Draven Ezreal is a deck that needs to like burn your health down pretty fast and like Just getting that extra damage in is really gonna matter here. Wow That's a uh, that's quite interesting. I Mean, I guess I'm denying that it doesn't feel like a good deny Aren't I like losing the game if I don't refuge this turn I can just refuge later Ooh, yeah, that Ballistic Bot definitely attacks here. Yep. All three of them, buddy. You gotta get it all in like last time. This is such a weak play. You, you gotta bluff it. Like, there you go. That's correct. I mean, I could die to some weird over the top hand, but I think I just like Spirit Refuge all three of my units and live. I, I definitely like can't block here. I mean, I have nothing. If he hits a flock now, he's pretty good. God, what a slow roll. Okay, nice. So I can just kind of like open attack with this Spirit's Refuge, which is kind of sick. And I kind of have to. Like if I do anything other than open attack with like Triple Spirit's Refuge, I am definitely trolling, I think. Like Triple Spirit's Refuge is pretty good. Never submit. Shadows cut deep as any weapon. Cause like Tarek's not leveling this turn anyway, and giving him an action on this attack is just really, really bad. But I kind of like the fact that I'm healing to 17. That's kind of neat. But yeah, there's just like when you when you run all the draws he could have. Like when I think about using like we could have used like a Zenith Blade there or something. But like everything he just rummaged into, his rummage, you know, his range could be like Mystic. It could be Second Scorched Earth. It could be a Second Century. It could be like 
a flock off the top. It could be like so many things that absolutely ass fuck us if we don't open attack with Spirit's Refuge. So it's like just insanely greedy not to. But like his entire deck. All right, well, I'm kind of liking how high my health is here. That's neat. Yeah, this deck's just nuts. Don't blink. Yeah, I mean, in this case, I think since I'm fully healed, I'll just like tank it up again. I think I'm pretty happy just playing the Crescent out here for the Nightfall and like not banking. Monk block. Oh yeah, play Solitary Monk to block the Ezreal. I like, I like how you guys think. It's true. Like when, it, like it's an elusive 3-3 and Ezreal's an elusive 1-3. It's the perfect counter. Of course. That's a good draw, by the way. Because our lose condition is this Zed dying to something right now. And this is a nice draw because it plays around that lose condition. That one's quite interesting. I mean, we've got, like, Zenith. Do I need to keep this Tarek alive? Because, like, committing a Blessing of Targon into, like, a 1 health damaged unit is kind of, like, the worst play I could make. <clears throat> I could do a Shadow Shift into replay Tarek. Wait, that's also bad. Keeping this Tarek alive is like actually the most donkey play. It actually gives me a chance to lose this game. I can't lose this game if I just let this through like a normal human being. And just give, if I just give Zed Zenith Blade with like Crescent Guardian Overwhelm, we just win. Like... <laughs> uh oh, he's got Battering Ram. Monka. So Mystic or Flock here. Second Ezreal? Second Ezreal. Man, Ezreal Draven when it doesn't draw a flock, am I right? Oh well, what are you gonna do? Poor guy, no flock. Six. Wait a second, hang on. He's got the ignition this turn. I'm not, I'm not ever dead, am I? Nah, we're fine. This is an easy game. Unfortunately, he does have like an overwhelm absorber, but I've got a lot of overwhelm here. I think he needed to use both of his rummages a little bit earlier this game. That was likely his misplay here. And I mean, we're always just open attacking. This open attack looks pretty good. Whee! So, we can see he played rummage from the right side of hand, which means he had two rummage from an early position. He used the first rummage a little too late. That deck can't really stop this, can it? Oh god. Yeah, I didn't think so. Wow, that must be sad. He's just showing it. He drew it off the top. But yeah, I think that's like, that's one of the things about um, Ezreal Draven that a lot of people misplay is like knowing when to rummage early. And it's really difficult to do. But I think that's probably what lost that guy this game. We saw he had two rummages from an early position. Like on turn two or three of the game, he had like two rummages he was just staring at. It's difficult because you need to like know exactly how the matchup's gonna play out. You need to know like what you want to discard early ahead of time before you need it. But if he had used those rummages more aggressively and fixed his hand earlier, I don't think we are supposed to win that game. Is this different from Lee Sin Fun? Ah! I spilled my water. Oh God. Oh, it's everywhere. Hang on. Oh God, I don't have any more Kleenex. Oh no. Oh god, it's dripping. Oh, I'm fucking I I've gotta change my underwear. Hang on. Oh, oh fuck it's Alright, it's literally all over me. I'm gonna go get a towel. Hang on guys. Wait a second. Oh god. Oh no. Oh. Ah! And I literally almost fucking slipped and fell. Yeah, this is a dream hands. Alright. I'm gonna like I have to change my underwear. Is it like I don't know how Twitch rules work. Is it too suggestive if I do it just slightly off camera? I'm just not gonna talk about it anymore. <sighs> Hang on a second. What the fuck is this? Okay. God, what do I discard from this hand? Wait. Shit, I kinda like this hand. Discard Guiding Touch? God, how, how could I do that? How could I discard a Guiding Touch? Is that even possible to discard a Guiding Touch? Hang on, one second. I'm gonna, I, I've gotta So the reason I had to play the Sketcher was because I knew I was gonna be AFK for a minute. 
And I knew I was gonna have to pass that turn automatically. I had to get him to not attack. He'd never attack if I played the Sketcher there. Which means we never have to take the damage even though we're literally not present to block it. Because he can't attack there. It's not a bluffable spot. <clears throat> Alright. I didn't grab the towel though. Fuck! was a little weird. I'm uh, gonna be honest with you. I'm just gonna wipe it all up. <sighs> God, there's nothing worse than having a wet desk. Alright, why is that Aphelios dead? Wait a second. What's happening in this game? What if I just attack with the Zed anyway? The only problem is I kind of need to be banking mana. So I kind of can't. Oh, man. Sum is always covered in lint. Yeah, I got pets, bro. I wear, I wear a lot of black shirts, and I got pets. I haven't bought clothing in literally like a decade. And so I have all my goth shit from high school. Oh, what an easy, what an easy game. One of Fade Guide is nuts in this deck. One of Fade Guide, one of Fade Guide. Um... I think I'd rather run Ghost. Pretty sure I'd rather run Ghost. I mean, okay, it's it's, it's kind of close. It could be Fey Guide. So this is an interesting one. Uh, against Trundle Lissandra, River Shaper is actually, I think, one of the big win conditions. This is a pretty interesting one. Um, I haven't played this matchup a ton. In my head, I'm imagining this being... I guess we have a lot of ways to keep shit alive. Denai is honestly not even that great in opening hands here. I mean, it's nice to have it against, like, Vengeance. But, like... I need a sustained board first, and like it's that's not gonna be something I deal with that early. If anything, I'd rather have I'd rather keep guiding touch than deny. Because I think like I'll be able to heal the river shaper. I think I actually do this. Because like deny or bastion later will stop a vengeance. Vengeance, even if unanswered, isn't the worst thing ever because it's so expensive. And River Shaper has odds of drawing me into both Deny and Bastion as well as my natural draws anyway. Ghost is better than Fey Guide, says Kyogre. Hmm, interesting. There are definitely some benefits to Fey Guide. But yeah, River Shaper, the way, like, Demacia works against the Shadow Wash Fire, at least historically, I mean, maybe there's something different in this example, is, like, part of that is just, like, River Shaper is a pretty hard card for them to, like, efficiently answer. Like, what do you do? Oh, Lissandra, that's cheating. Ooh, no Lissandra. That's rough, dude. So, I mean, he either drew a Trundle or he had a weird brain oopsie. Alright. So... Uh, I don't know the matchup tables of this deck. I mean, this is kind of like a new deck. Who knows? But in my head, this deck is a little awkward into Lissandra Trundle. And River Shaper is a really good problem solver in this deck for that problem matchup. You might argue that between, like, Zed and, you know, Sunblast Vigor and shit, maybe this matchup isn't even bad on its own. That could be true. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, these all suck. I am the blade in the darkness. I am the blade in the darkness. <laughs> Fucking Zed. Now, what are you? That's not a vile feast. Okay, why? Okay. Uh, I do actually really favor being mana efficient here. I kind of don't mind literally pre-sun blessing my Zed. So mana efficiency, when we go to next turn, we're going to have a total of 8 mana. Uh, you'll notice, unless we're wanting to use Hush, our entire hand is multiples of 2 mana-wise. We can either play 4 2s or 2 2s and a 4 or 2 4s, which means there's no reason to be mana efficient here. I can just pass and make sure I'm playing maximally reactively because we won't need the extra mana this turn in, in all likelihood. I mean, obviously, there's a chance off the draws. It's not an exact science, but... I mean, I want to attack with Zed. There's not really a reason to, like, pre-pale the Zed. I do have to get it in with the River Shaper. And using Flurry on River Shaper is pretty good. Um, I mean, it's a grant. Honestly, Flurry on River Shaper... Because, like, isn't... Rush is temporary, right? Just using Flurry on River Shaper feels fucking great to me, man. Honestly. This feels nuts. 
So the reason there's no there's no reason to pre-commit a spell on Zed is because one half of his attack is gonna get blocked anyway. So you're not actually redoubling value by pre-committing a spell. Perfect. So this is exactly what we wanted. Um, in this case, he's tapped to one, so our River Shaper is living. We can go ahead and use the Flurry on the River Shaper. That keeps it alive. And we can just use Pale Cascade on Zed. Now, if you're paying attention to this game, there's one slight flaw with one of the arguments I made like 15 seconds ago, but it still stands for other reasons. Okay, whatever. Is it better to like Pale or Guiding? We have a lot of, like, healing later. Is it also better to just, like, Sun Blessed Vigor? Wait, that's, like, the most normal thing to do of them all. What if we just Sun Blessed Vigor? But I might want to save Sun Blessed for River Shaper. Pale stats are relevant if Zed levels. And there was a weird consideration to, like, use Pale on the Zed clone to push four damage and to get, like, half a Zed level trigger. There's, like, there's definitely some argument for that. That's a weird play. Okay, so we've got pretty good counters to stuff. We shouldn't need to like deny that. I'm sure that's a trolley deny. Uh, I'm sure I can just like vigor this up. And this is why we kind of had to save the vigor earlier. And because my units both have like decent max HP, I think I'd actually rather pale here than, no. No, I will guiding this actually. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty nuts. Like River Shaper is just hard carrying this matchup. This is absolutely crazy. Are you running Blessing of Targon on this deck? Nope, I cut it. Um, it might be a one-off. It's a good example of, again, something that can help hands where we don't have Tarek. So he can't do another sweep, so I can just play another River Shaper here. He literally can't punish this, because it's either Vile or Ice Shards, and I'm only going to need one spell in response to that. So yeah, we're just kind of, uh, kind of winning here. And of course, managing to keep our Denai up through this is, is exactly what we want. And our Zed has, like, good max HP. Wait, I vigored both of them. Yeah, this is why we have three Vigors. Pretty nuts card, honestly. I kind of want to like pre pale the Zed in this case. Because, like, this time he's actually pushing damage. Mm, that might have been kind of trolly. Ah, oh, whatever. So, yeah. I mean, the Zed has a level here. These are usually the points where, like, the scariest thing he could do is, like, I don't know, harsh winds, I guess? Because, like, I mean, Vengeance isn't efficient and gets denied. I don't even know if I'd deny a Vengeance, honestly. I guess in this hand... I mean, I could just play a second Zed. I think I just saved Deny for something scarier. How many people are actually running Ruination in that deck still? I guess I'll just play the second Zed after this. Sure. I mean, the only difference is, yeah, the Zed won't be leveled up anymore, but... Zed level is kind of doesn't really matter. Yeah, so this is like a pretty good explanation of a lot of different things. Like we we tried to like build around like hand states that don't have Tarek and add some like replacement cards to Tarek. The thing about River Shaper that I like in this deck that's really kind of weird to understand but really important to understand is that River Shaper is good when we don't draw Zed or another three drop because it's a Tarek buff target, because it's a three drop that likes getting buffed. But it's also good when we don't draw Tarek, because keep in mind, Tarek isn't a four drop, Tarek is a value card, like per turn value engine, effectively. And River Shaper can definitely substitute for that. Like, imagine that game, you know, we can't draw more Tareks, because we have three and we can only have three. Imagine that game if that River Shaper was one of a lot of cards, right? And kind of spot count for that and ask ourselves, like, what other cards would be able to feel pretty powerful in that matchup. Uh, River Shaper feels good here. I think it's important to make sure we're ratioed decently. Right now, I mean, this is not optimal ratioing because I literally just made this deck. Nothing's refined about this. But currently, I mean, that's why I'm onto River Shaper 2 Tasty because in some matchups, I'll really want Tasty and River Shaper will be kind of useless. And in some matchups, the opposite will be true. And that last matchup is a really good a example of that. What do you think about Rush on River Shaper? So I can guarantee you Rush is better than Flurry of Fists. All right. This is an interesting deck. So Dawn and Dusk is kind of horrible for... To be honest, it's it's a similar reason that Out of the Way is horrible. Which is just like, they're a little bit too expensive for cards that are also going to force you to play other cards on the same turn. To get maximal value. I like, I like the speed at which this deck is playing though. I kind of want to run Scales of the Dragon in this deck. The more I look at this card, the more it's just kind of like popping in my head. 
The problem is, like, River Shaper is really good in, like, the Demacia one because you have barriers. And I think River Shaper Freljord is, like... There has to be something kind of low-key in River Shaper Freljord. There's just no way there's not something at least decent in River Shaper Freljord. Like, it's the... It's the perfect match. Like, Troll Chant with River Shaper is toxic. And, like, they have, like, you know, freezes, too. It's just there's not really a win condition in those two colors. Shaper is so baity, I tried it myself and it's shit. Oh, it might be bad in this deck. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're about to find out. So, it's easy to identify a lot of cards. And, you know, I've been talking about cards in this deck that are kind of bad. But we need to ask ourselves, like, what's in this deck that's actually good, right? Like, what, what do we really want from this deck <clears throat> you know i'm not sure exactly what the biggest lose condition of this deck is but when we're deck building the thing we have to be thinking about the most is like this idea of like problem solving right and this idea of just like what's the biggest problem for this deck is it a hand state is it a matchup categorize your problems in terms of either hand states or matchups your hand states or opponent deck and figure out like you know what's the problem uh, i mean with other Taric versions like my Taric draven version the biggest problem was aggro so i skewed really hard into anti aggro but here with access to tasty faith folk and spirits refuge and you know i mean even like spacey sketcher is decent aggro we have a lot of good anti aggro so i mean i really don't think we need more of that kind of thing um our biggest problem is could be hand state and that's why i've gone like really heavy into three drops you'll notice so okay we have to be thinking okay on turn four if we're thinking about, okay, what if I draw Zed? What if I draw Taric? What's going to happen on turn four? You know? The odds of drawing a three of by turn four of the game, and we're keeping both Zed and Taric in our mulligan with this deck, so that's, like, pretty easy to do. The odds of, of drawing uh, Taric or Zed uh, individually as a three of by turn four is going to be, what would that be, uh, 12 for a three of. So it's something like 60%. 67% in this case, if we're like full mulliganing, but like depending on how you do it, it's like you, you can approximate it to 60% because Zed's like Zed's turn three is that would be 11 and you're not always full mulliganing. So sometimes it's like 10 point something. Um, there's some cards that you'll have to keep. So basically we have to be thinking, okay, what do we want in this deck for hands that don't draw Zed? How do we bail out those hands? This is the reason why, an hour ago, I immediately looked at this deck and said, Tasty Fey Folk is the single biggest reason to be in Ionia. Because it solves literally two problems. A, the hand state, in which we don't have Zed, which is one of our vulnerable hand states. And B, the matchup in which we're against aggro, which is our vulnerable matchup because we're kind of a combo deck. And you could even say C, a hand state where Zenith Blade is looking for a good target, which is like somewhat distinct from those as well, sure. Um, so Tasty is great in this deck, and almost certainly that's part of why River Shaper is bad, because I think Tasty is probably a 3 of. Here's another one. What would be a good card for hand states that don't have Taric? Well, that's an interesting one, right? And that's, like, an important question to be asking. I mean, Fangs can be a little bit better in those hand states, because it's a turn 4 play, but this deck doesn't really need to play on curve, right? What does Taric really give us? Taric gives us, like, kind of, like, outgrind value. Uh, Star Shaping ends up being hilariously pretty decent when we don't draw Taric because we just want like a way to you know maybe end the game and get like a good value play in this deck Taric isn't really a four drop this isn't really a deck that needs to be playing on curve we're not really trying to replace a Taric with a turn four play because this deck doesn't really need a turn four play it kind of needs a turn three play because if we draw Taric we need something for Taric to latch to but there's nothing like and, and, and because turn three is kind of in reactive spell decks turn three is really important because you know you can double float but you can't skip turn three. You're, you're fucked if you skip turn three. Um, your, your mana is all getting burned. We don't really need it. When I say replacement for Taric, in this case, I really mean like something that's going to replace his his overall like role in matchups. Like if we have a game where we haven't drawn Taric, what's our problem? Maybe that we don't close the game as well. Or maybe we don't have enough value, right? Or maybe we have like, you know, cards that don't have as good targets. Or maybe not enough units. Like those kinds of things. Not lack of a four mana unit, right? Um, so I could see a third star shaping, basically. Um, Flurry of Fists is kind of nice for that reason. Like, I could see this as an argument for, like, hand states that don't have Taric. Flurry can be a way to kind of, like, push through the game a little bit earlier, right? Shadow Assassin looking decent here. Uh, it is. It's not really, like, a great buff target. It's a decent card in general. But, yeah, that's kind of, like, how we have to be thinking about this. And, I mean, for that reason, I could see Trevor Snooze Bottom, right? Because Trevor Snooze Bottom is... Isn't Trevor Snoozebottom kind of like a better Taric? Wait a second. Why Why don't I just run Trevor? 
Why am I running this Terra card? And you could also run a. I wanted to run like Sparklefly and Mentor before. Travis News Bottom is late game. It can it can give you some long term value. It's a way to like push through a game. I don't know if it would really be working very well with the kind of buffs that this deck does though, because like we're not doing like big like plus attack stuff like Battle Fury. Travis News Bottom is an underrated card, but you have to run it with like Elixir of Wrath or Battle Fury or stuff like that. Whereas this deck is like we're playing, we're spending mana for Overwhelm. Our spells are a lot more defensive, you know, like Bastion and Sunblessed Vigor, not like plus attack spells. So I think it falls a little bit short. But I could see something like a one of Trevor for hands where we don't have Taric, if I want a replacement to Taric. And that's the thing to understand about ratioing, and that's why ratioing is a really important thing to be thinking about in card games. Because if you're thinking about like a one of or a two of, you shouldn't be thinking about them as themselves. You should be thinking about them as an extension of like what sub role they're playing in your deck, right? So, like, I can't run four Terex in this deck, because the game physically doesn't allow me to run four Terex. But let's say I want to run a fourth card just for ratioing to help in hand states that don't draw Terex, and four is a good number for that based on the math, then that would be a one of Terex replacement. In this case, I, Trevor is probably a bad example, because I'm sure there's better Terex replacements, but you can kind of think about it like that. A Sparklefly is a real consideration in this deck. The only, so the issue with Sparklefly is for Sparklefly to be good, you kind of need Mentor. And if we're in Mentor, if we're in like that many gems, Mentor of the Stones is kind of a weird card. It's not necessarily a bad card, but it's important to understand it's like, it is a deck building cost of Lee Sin. Like the benefit that this deck has over Lee Sin is we don't really need to run like that full like gem spam game plan. And like, if we're in Mentor at that point, that might be the point where you should just be in Lisa, which feels kind of bad, but might be true. All right, I need more spells here. I have too many goddamn units in this deck. How do I see the ratioing? Yeah, 17 units is already too many. God, it's not actually Sonic Wave. Oh, Christ. Ah, oh, Jesus. Why not just a ghost? Because for the sh cheap, cheap price of three more mana and one more action, you get to have a 3-4 stat line. It's a crazy stat line. A 3-4, you can like block a Draven and force him to use Axe. 3-4 is crazy. On turn four, it's nuts. All right, so Azir is a really aggressive deck and River Shaper, we don't really want River Shaper here, I think. Um, don't we? Do we? Don't we? Keep star shaping. I mean, so this is interesting. Like, we, we want to slow down his aggression, but it's like an early burn transition and we have the attack on turn three. We want to mulligan aggressively for either Zed or Tasty Fey Folk because they're both good against aggro. Zed can race them down and sometimes even force them to block, which is good. And Tasty Fey Folk, of course, is the lifesteal. River Shaper is a little too slow for this matchup, but I'll actually keep the star shaping because Azir burn transitions into burn so quickly and so powerfully that I'll actually be able to gain value out of this just like guaranteed casual like 25 health for no reason. Oh look, well that's fascinating. I've got a 32 health game, huh? Interesting. Wouldn't you know it? Alright. So the Azir changes my play. I was gonna do a Zenith Blade um, on the Zed and like do a forced level up. Now that he's played the Azir, it might not be worth using a Zenith Blade in this fashion. I mean, dealing the one extra damage to the Azir doesn't change anything. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to use more Zenith Blades than this. Honestly, just fucking do it. Like, I don't need the mana this turn. I can't need the mana next turn. And like, I mean, I'd rather get more attacks and level Zed faster and put more actual pressure on. Like, going for the greedy daybreak. I, I think Zenith Blade is a baity card in a lot of cases. And don't get me wrong. There's plenty of cases where you do need the daybreak. But... People do over-greed it a little bit. There's some cases where you have to just, like, use your card. And this is going to be, like, a really fast game. And I really value my Zed leveling up. So, Fate Guide feels pretty alright here. I mean, honestly, can't complain. So, he's using a Zier Burn. He might... God, have people actually... Has nobody updated that deck, or is everyone just using mild versions still? I'm surprised more people are playing it. Cause I haven't I haven't played that deck in a in like a while in a hot minute. Destiny calls. Do not disappoint me. Hmm. I mean, Azir Bird can't actually punish my one health Zed, can it? 
I guess it's probably better to do this though. And just like keep the fake guide. Because I'm gonna need like one more block. We're not killing him next turn. We're just gonna basically like we're gonna attack him with our big elusive Zed. And then we're we're gonna heal every turn to full health. It's just that easy. Vile Feast. Uh I didn't put Vile Feast in that deck. I mean, unless he's just It wouldn't even Vile Feast in that deck wouldn't even make sense, honestly. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Why would anyone do that? Alright. We're pogging out with our Fey Guide. Our Zed is now elusive. God, Fey Guide is so bad. It might be a one of. Fey Guide as a one of is fine in this deck, I think. Why is Fey Guide going in? Um, because we have tricks and he has to know we have tricks. Like, we can use our mana proactively in this matchup because he doesn't have tricks and we do. And, and like, we do. So, like, if he blocks, we're just getting value out of our mana this turn. And, like, there's a lot of hands where he feels like he might not be able to block there. Like, our Zed is already giving him, you know, if, if he wants to, like, trade. We're just getting it in, you know? I mean, Fey Guide feels good this game. Oh no, he's got a rise. Not a rise. Man, I wonder if he thinks we actually have nine health. <laughs> I guess it's kind of sad that my Zed can't really block. Wait, where's all my health going? Hang on. Yeah, sure. It's never gonna matter what we choose. How's this? So I do this, and this allows me to play around Doom Beast or Thingy this turn, and then I open attack. Can he like can he punish me going out of three? Oh, he could Doom Beast and Butcher. Oh, I lose to Doom Beast Butcher. Interesting. That's interesting. Caretaker too. Oh yeah, Caretaker would also trigger three deaths. You're right. I actually have to save one more health. I actually don't have a choice. Huh. That's interesting. So I have to pre-vigor. Because Caretaker, Caretaker solo wins him the game, and that's just like way too common. So we need the one more health. So yeah, this is what the game's all about. It's just about playing around hand states. Like, three health isn't enough for... There's two hand states. It's Butcher Doom Beast or Butcher Ruinous Path, both of which aren't really common here because he doesn't look like he has a Butcher in his hand. But a single Caretaker just dealing three damage after the attack is way, way, way too common. And we have to play around that hand. So we can't go down to three health there. And uh, I mean, don't we always just have this on the open? Wee! Right, good thing we put Fey Guide in this deck, huh? 